okay in the API we are creating um, the user can have many followers or uh, a user can be followed by many other users so this is a many-to-many -many relation and and then type rm i'll put the link in the description the, um, so you can read the docs about many-to-many -many relations but basically sorry uh, basically my browser just uh, hanged sorry so yeah so the, here they provide an example which is category and the question the relation between them many to many which means each category can uh, contains many questions and each question can be contains also many categories so here yeah, they are creating a unidirection uh, many to many relation which means as you can see we are only putting the many to many and the joint table decorator in the question uh, entity so which this means the unidirectional many to many relation means that we can only reference uh, the category from the question so if we are selecting the question we can get its categories but if you are selecting the category we can't select its questions uh, so this is one option you can do and after you do after you put these two decorators you will have this conjunction table this is probably the um, the basic the most the most basic example you can find here you find here you see here you see how you you can save them if you would come to that uh, eventually and here here deletion here how you can load them I think most RMs and not just do the same thing um, here, here here they describe the bi-directional relations which they you put the many to many decorator in both entities and one of them are required to put the join the creator in it so here if you are selected the category we can reference the question the questions for it and if we are uh, in the question selecting them we can reference this uh, categories um, and then here they describe many to many relations with custom properties I think this is the most uh, the most common thing when you create many to many relations you want to put other um, entities uh, other columns inside the conjunction table the ID probably the created at updated at stuff like this stuff like this sorry so uh, how you can create it is you define an entity and the relation between the entity and the two other entities is one to many so as you can see so post to category the conjunction table that links the post with its many categories and the category with its many posts has a relation many to one with both of the two entities the post and the category so but it will be a little bit more interesting in our uh, case since the user will have relation with uh, itself the user entity will have relation with itself many to many so um how how i will create it first i will use the third example they provide the many to many relations with custom properties so first I'll generate a module nest gmo I will call it um, user follower so user they actually will compare they will convert the camel cast into I'm not sure if this is the official name but I think kebab case <laughs> I'm not sure but so uh, after the module has been generated I will create an an entity inside the folder so I'll call it user I will stick to their name and conviction uh, follower dot entity dot typescript okay so here I will import oh, it's getting laggy I'm not sure why So I'll import from type rm the entity the column and the primary generated column. Uh, I think yeah, also many to one and join column. 
just give myself a little bit of space. Okay, so at entity. Export class user follower, which I'll make it extends the generic entity, which contains the created at updated at. I will just show it to you. So yeah, it's only contains this. Uh, by the way, you don't need to have a callback function here. You can just put the string, but yeah. Okay, so at primary generated column, primary generated, yes, call it an ID, type number. And now let's, let's work on the relation at many to one. It will be, I'll call it, oops, I'll call it follower, followers. And will be type of array of user entities so the first callback and the arguments will return the user entity and the second callback will have uh, a u which type uh, u variable of type user entity and will return you dot for followers, which we don't have at the moment. So I will call this followers as well. This is a typo. So let's just copy this. So this is how you get the followers for each user, and this is how you get the use the users that are following a specific one. So this will be called following yes and uh, I will add the join table here so I can rename them rename these foreign keys so name will be um, following ID just copy this as well put it as followers ID and the last one is the status column so each follow request uh, will contain a status which is accepted pending or uh, blocked so enum status Blocked B equal to blocked and accepted will be equal to accept. Let me just copy it. And the final one is pending. So here we'll have a column. type uh, enum to assign it to the status and um, type enum and the final thing is the default value so default will be bending so status dot Pending. The column name will be status. The type status. Okay. 
Now let's go to the to the user entity. So at the bottom we can add add one two money would be called for no worse should be type of user for all. of course another and the first argument callback will return a user for all. the second one call it uf for user follower do return uf dot followers I'll just copy it since it's similar and here I will return uf dot following and I will name it as well following here so all save now we need to register this uh, entity inside our module which is imported in the app module by the CLI this user follower we do this by by using the static method from the type rm module so type all module dot for feature to accept an array with our user follower entity which this will return the user follower repository and also in the app module inside the connection object we need to add the user entity the follower user follower oh, I noticed something this is my bad I, I should I should have called it user follower entity. So entity, I can type entity. So this will break a lot of things. The fastest solution is to go here inside the search icon and replace. So sorry. So we want to replace the user follower. I'll put this. So this is the exact match. Okay, so all of these. So just like this. This will update 11 occurrence. Yes, I want to update them. So as simple as this. It will update everywhere. Uh, yeah, and also here. So now if I will run the server. So npm run start. We'll just, just run start. So I know I didn't create control for the likes and uh, or for the followers but maybe in, but but maybe later since it's uh, obvious what i will do um i think i will forget about the one-to-one -one relation since it's it's really simple but for the many to many i highly recommend that you read here oops my my pc is really slow sorry uh, but i i recommend that you read here it's content i will put the link in the description it contains a lot of useful information Anyway, let's hope uh, there is no errors. I think if this is okay, I will end the video and the next one I will start working on uh, uh, putting some seed data inside the database. So let's go here. Maximize. Increase the size. But let me just go to the public schema. ER diagram. We should see. I think I need to refresh it. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it's there. Yes, so it's the user follower entity which contains the followers ID, following ID, created that, updated that, updated that, created that. Anyway, uh, but there is something wrong. It's the name. I forget to change the name. Uh, I will call it user followers. So here. sorry user like this I like putting underscores in my table names and column names 
since I usually need to split by the underscore and map them to another thing, I usually do this. So uh, this, uh, but I'm I'm not sure if this is the best uh, the best the best approach. But I think yeah, the name will be changed now. I'll just rerun it. But yeah, the next video I will start working on the seed seeding the data. You, I will use a library called FakerJS. Um, I will try to put everything inside the uh, inside the app itself, so you can. What well, I am planning on putting a variable inside the env. So when you change it, so if you don't, so if the variable is set to a specific value, it will seed the database. If not, it won't seed anything. So I, th I think this is uh, a good approach. But I, I'm not saying it's the best approach. Just, just I think it's good. Okay, should work. Maybe if I hit refresh. Nope. Maybe here. I think I. Yeah. So this is sometimes happen. I will just show you. So since we changed the table name, NestJS will only delete the name the tables that it will re it will recreate. So if this table is not. Uh, from this JS anymore, so it didn't touch it. So I'll just, I'll just delete it. Uh, oh, yeah, yes, delete it. And uh, now it won't uh, create it again. So we have the user follower sign here. So I think this is a good schema we can build our API on. The idea is to learn about this uh, JS, not to spend so much time on the entities itself, in the table, in the database itself. So yeah. Faking data, then we will go into the controllers and map some requests. Okay, thank you.